you guys know what the greatest event in heaven is? Praise and worship. Praise and worship is the greatest event that is taking place in heaven right now. Amen. They do more worship and more praising because your mansion's already built. Because Jesus already went to heaven. He says, I go to a place and prepare a place for you. Your place is already prepared. The thing is, what's going on in heaven or now, there is more worship and more praise that is going on. More than the eye. That's why the Lord says, you know, the word says, you know, eye has not seen and ear has not heard of the things that God has in store for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you guys awake? Yes. I'll wake you up. I got my trouble. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But it's good to see each and every one of you guys in here tonight on a Wednesday night Bible study. But I do want to continue with this message that, uh, that I've been on on Wednesday nights because it is so important, people, to know and understand the times that we are living in right now. We're living in, in some trying times. Amen. We're living in some trying times. And when trying times come, that means that we're going to be challenged in life. We're going to be challenged in life to see and know and understand the endurance and the perseverance that we're going to have to have in order to follow through to get to that place where God wants us to be at. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that with all my heart because I know for a fact that everybody in here has gone through a trial. Amen. Whatever trial you're going through, you've been through trials. And maybe you're going through trials right now. Amen. But I want to say something, uh, Sister Diane, is that when we started singing that song, I sing praises to your name. I had my eyes closed. And, that, and every time that we would play that song, your mom would come and prostrate herself on the floor there. And I kept my eyes closed and I started thinking about you. And I opened up my eyes and there you were, praising the Lord with flags. Amen. Amen. So see, sometimes, it, you know, the grieving will continue and, and sometimes the hurt and the pain is still there. Because it does hurt people when you lose a loved one. We've been through all this. Amen. And it's not the end of life. Listen to me. Death is only the beginning of a new life. Amen. And that's the revelation that we people here on earth have probably have not gotten a revelation of that. Because in due time, in due time, we're all going to be home with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Seriously, people. And it's hard to believe that. But, and, but you know, it hurts us. Our hearts are hurting our minds sometimes we can't even think straight anymore because of all our loved ones have gone home you know we've lost loved ones and you know and especially when it happens back to back to back to back and you begin to question God why Lord why Lord why Lord and you'll never get the answer you will never get the answer to the whys when you begin to ask that question only God knows amen and this is why sometimes we go through trials like this. And even when you have to go through trials of death, trials of hardship, financial trials, relationship trials, whatever trial you're going through, the Lord says that He would see us through all these things. Amen? Because like I said, we've all been through trials. And one point or another, we have all gone through something. But we're going to have to hold on to the promises of God. We're going to have to stand on His Word. Remember what Sister Joanne was saying Sunday morning? It's the Word, it's the Word, it's the Word, it's the Word. When you get this Word in you, and, you, and the Word is grounded, and buried, and rooted in you, I can tell you something, people. It's going to be a lot easier for you to become an overcomer when the trials do come. Because the trials will come. No, the trials will come, people. Amen. And I do want to talk about that. And the title of my message is this. Trials, trials, trials. When do they end? They're never going to end because the Lord says that we would have trials. Tribulations. It's a time of testing, people. Tell somebody, it's a time of testing. We're being tested, people. No, we're being tested. That's all we're being. We're just being tested. Amen. 
So what are trials? Trials is what brings, brings tests, it brings pain, it brings trouble, it brings uh, tribulation, it brings great misery, it brings distress, it brings anxiety, it brings affliction, it brings cause, it causes pain, and it even causes us to suffer when we go through trials, amen? But we got hope in God, people. <laughs> man, I tell you what, if you got this word in you, man, it's just a matter of time before you're going to go through or come out of it. Amen. Amen. But see, the biggest thing about trials is that trials are meant to test our faith. How many people got faith in God? Amen. Then don't let go of your faith, people. Don't let go of your faith because it's your faith that's going to see you through these trials. Amen. And trials are designed to purify our faith. Amen? Amen. Trials are designed to increase our patience. Amen. And sometimes we need more patience than we than when we're going through these things. Amen? And trials are designed to bring us where? To a better place in life. Amen? Amen. How many people have ever gone through a trial? And how many people have ever been out of that trial? And how relieved you are. Amen. That it is completely over. Amen. 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 Because we've all been there people. We've been through this. We've been through a lot of trials in life. We've been through a lot of trials in this ministry. But we don't let go. Amen. I want to thank the worship team. What a beautiful time of worship. You ladies are doing such a great job. The young girls. I'm so proud of those two little girls. They've added so much to the worship team. Like little angels. Voices of little angels that are... I don't want to puff them up, Marcus. Amen. But you know what? All these ladies sound good. And I want to thank Pastor Marsha for the selection of music. You know, she'll sit there. And, 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 and I see her at home. And she's flipping through the pages like this. Looking for the right music. To glorify the Lord. She's not picking music just to sing another song. She's picking music so that we can stand in the presence of God and worship Him. In spirit and in truth. Amen. So that she can lead all of us into that place. Amen. But but trials, man, oh my God, people, it brings us to a better place. Amen. And it causes us, it causes us to glorify the Lord and God Himself. Amen. But 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 from time to time, people, we're gonna have to hang on to the promises of God. Even the Word tells us that the Lord said that He wouldn't give us more than what we can handle. Think about everything that you're going through when you're going through a trial. Amen? Sometimes you don't know how you can handle this. You know, your mind and your heart are hurting so much that sometimes you just don't know how to come out of it. Sometimes people feel like they're in a maze. Have you ever been seen a maze where that little rat is trying to come out? Huh? A mice, that rat always knows how to come out of it. Because all he's got to do is smell the cheese. Amen? But I want all of you to turn over to the book of James. Amen? I want to share a couple of verses from the Word of God tonight concerning trials and what does it mean. Amen? In the book of James, in the book of James, amen? Started in verse 2, it says, My brother, and it says, Count it all a joy when you fall into various trials. Amen? If anybody knows about trials, it's James. Amen? James was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And you think that he did not see and witness and hear all the things that the Lord himself spoke? All the miracles, signs, and wonders. All the condemnation, the persecution, the condemnation that came against Jesus Christ. Amen? He saw it and he heard it. Amen? He says, my brother, he says, count it all a joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing, here it comes people, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. You're going to have to be a little patient. Have you, been, have you ever been around people that are impatient? That are impatient. That are not willing to wait. Amen. A lot of people want those microwave answers. You're not going to get it people. Amen. He says, but let patience have its perfect work. See, through, per through patience, God is trying to perfect you as you're going through this. He's trying to perfect you. He says, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, 
and what? Lacking nothing. Amen? 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 It says in verse 12, no, I'm sorry, not verse 12. Stay right there. Verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. But verse 6 is important, people. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. For, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded, unstable in what? In all his ways. Amen. See, too many people get impatient when you're going through trials. Think about why you're going through trials. I'm going to say this, okay? Sometimes we fall into trials and various trials because of our own mistakes that we make in life. Because of the disobedience and everything that we're doing and saying. And sometimes you look back, I just can't believe that I'm going through this. You're going through a trial, people. I just can't believe that I'm going through this. Think about what you're going through. You know, back up a little bit and start back and, and see where you were at when this whole thing started. You know that a lot of people don't realize when the trial begins? Huh? That all of a sudden it just hits you like that? It just hits you. The trial comes in and it just hits you. It doesn't come knocking at your door and say, I'm here, open up the door, I'm going to put you through a trial. It doesn't work that way, people. Sometimes the enemy comes in in many ways, people, and sometimes we leave those doors open. Sometimes we fall into various trials because of the decisions that we are making. Amen? Amen. So you have to take it into account, people. But see, don't be double-minded when you're going through this. Well, I just can't believe that the Lord is allowing me to go through all this. I'm in church every week. Amen? I try. I'm part of the ministry of helps. I'm a loving person. I'm kind. I do good works. I'm doing all this, Lord. So why am I going through all these trials? Why am I going through all these, these setbacks in my life? Sometimes we just don't seem to understand, huh? And sometimes we just don't seem to understand. And sometimes you'll never get the answer why you're going through this. But see, don't be double-minded. Think about what you're going through. Maybe it's God that's trying to raise you up to the next level. Maybe God is trying just to sharpen you a little bit in order for you to understand who this great God is. Amen? Amen. Like I said, we've been through some heavy trials, but we have never let go. We're never devil-minded. We keep our faith in God and we pray about it. Amen? Sometimes we have to get things that we hear a word, we put it up on the shelf and pray over it. Amen? So don't be so quick to walk away from God when you're going through a trial. As a believer, we should know that we're going to go through these things. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen? In verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures. See, we're going to have to endure temptations. Amen? For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen? Sometimes when people are going through trials, they feel like giving up on God. No, they feel like giving up on God. And guess what? When the enemy knows that you're giving up on God, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to come in with what? Temptations. He's going to start luring you. He's going to start pulling you. He's going to start to deceive you with deception and make you believe that it's okay that you go through this. Amen? Because, you know, there's a better bed of roses on this side. What has God done for you lately? Has God answered your prayers? You know, a lot of people are giving up on God because their prayers aren't being answered. What if God is testing you to see how much patience you really have with God? Amen? amen. No, I said amen. Yeah, amen. Oh my God, are you guys asleep? Yeah. Amen? amen? Thank you, Father. Blessed is a man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive, see... He will receive, that's a promise from God. Amen. He will receive the crown of life, which is the Lord has promised to those who love Him. How many love the Lord? Amen. How many people are willing to wait on the Lord? Yes. Oh my God, people, we're going to have to wait and wait and wait. It doesn't matter how long we wait, we wait upon the Lord. Amen? Amen. He says, let no one, he says, let no one say that when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. 
Amen. See, you'll know when the enemy's around. Because <laughs> God doesn't tempt you. When you get a temptation, when you get any kind of so crazy desire that's outside of the will of God, guess who's, try, guess who's speaking to your mind, people? The enemy. It's the devil. It's Satan. He came to tempt you. He doesn't show you everything. He's just giving you a little of a appetizer. Amen? And if you're hungry enough, you're going to order from the main menu. <laughs> oh, you guys will get that on the way home too. Amen? Amen? He says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? When he is drawn away by his own what? His own desires and enticed. See, it's up to you people what you want to do in life. It's up to you whether you want to cross that line of temptation. Look, I'm going to tell you this, you guys. Temptation in itself is not sin. It's when you cross the line of temptation that you fall into sin. Amen? And that's not God that's doing that. It's the enemy that's showing you anything and everything that your mind wants to see and desire. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So you better wake up, people. Open up your mind to see what's in front of you. Not everything that looks good is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. It says, Let no one say that when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Amen. Then it says, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Sin. To sin. Oh my God, people, you have better wake up. You had better wake up, people. Amen. Now if the devil can come and tempt Adam and Eve, how much more do you think that the enemy can come and tempt you? Huh? If the enemy can come and lie to Peter, huh, to deny the Lord three times, how much more do you think the devil can enter your mind and mess with you? If you let him. If he shows you something. If you get enticed by him. Amen? Amen? Amen. I hope you guys are picking up on something here. Amen? Because I don't want to fall short of the glory of God. I don't want to be tempted. The enemy will always come with something to throw at you. I don't care what it is, people. Amen? And it doesn't have to be about sexual immorality. You can be tempted in many other things, people. Amen? And you can fall through all these things. Amen? Amen. Let me repeat verse 13 again. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when his he is drawn away by his own desires and entice. Guess what, people? Don't you know that the enemy knows your past? Yes. The enemy knows everything about your past. The only thing the enemy doesn't know is your future. So he can bring those things back into your life. Those things that we were enticed with. Those crazy desires that we used to have before we came to Christ. Amen? Amen. Look, I don't want nobody to fall into a trial. And sometimes people, it's like I was saying, you will fall into a trial by choice if that desire is stronger. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Look, I'm, I'm trying to help. Look, I'm trying to help myself and I'm trying to help everybody in here. Because anybody and everybody in here can fall. Right. I can fall. Pastor Marcia can fall. Not Pastor Marcia. Oh yeah, she can fall too. Anybody here can fall. Anybody here can get enticed. Amen? Thank you, Father. He says, but each one is tempted. See, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, when that seed is planted, oh my God, people, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Listen to me. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Do not be deceived, my be... Oh my mom, my God. 
Tell somebody, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't you know that every time that the enemy comes around, you're going to know who it is? Huh? You're going to know exactly, you're going to know exactly when the enemy's around. Amen? You know why he, he, he comes around you? Because he knows that you represent who God is. And he's trying to destroy everything that represents who God is. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So those who be so weak-minded and double-minded, double-minded man, double-minded woman, one day you're serving God, the next day you're thinking about yesterday, and then you get you get convicted, and then your conscience gets all messed up, and then you're back with God again the next day, and then the next day something else happens, and pretty soon you're out there again in the world, thinking about the world and everything else that goes along with it. Amen? Well, you make words I remember. <laughs> Oh, those were the good old days. No, they weren't. The good old days haven't gone here yet, people. The good days are going to come when you're in the presence of God. Amen. That's when the good days are going to come. Right now, we're living through hell, people. Look at everything that's going on. The hardships and the trials that people are going through. Look at everybody that, you know, oh my God, there's so much stuff that is going on. Yes, trials upon trials upon trials, people, that are spread throughout this world. Sometimes people just can't find an answer. You know, I was hearing this survey, and they're saying that a lot of people are committing, what, suicide. They're killing themselves because they can't handle, they can't handle the pressures of life anymore. Amen? Amen. Young people, old people, everybody in, in, in different nations, people are committing suicide. Amen? How do, oh, my God, people. And these are trials that people are going through. Look, but the only thing that we can do is that this word, that's why it's so important, people, to get this word so grounded and rooted in us. That when we start facing these trials and we fall, like James says, you know, consider it a joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that what you're facing, oh my God, people. We're going to have to learn how to live through it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Again, it says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Amen. Now turn over to the book of James 1. Oh, I was already there, huh? I'm giving you a second teaching here. Amen. Thank you, Father. James chapter 5. That's where I wanted to go. James chapter 5, starting in verse 7. It says, Therefore, it says, Be patient. No, be patient. Tell somebody, be patient. Just be patient. Huh? Has anybody ever gone to the doctor and waited for ever and ever and ever and ever and ever? Look, that's why I don't go to Pastor Marsha's doctor. Because I can sit there for hours and hours and hours. You sit there in that lobby room waiting for the doctor for them to call you. Then you go into the examining room and there you're there again another hour sitting there. Man, I get impatient. And I said, I'm never going with you to your doctor. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he says, therefore, he says, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early latter rain. Can you imagine if the farmer... They didn't see his crop rising, that he would go out there. Huh? He didn't see the rains coming in. And he was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and the rains didn't come. What if he went and unplanted everything? He took every seed out of the ground, all that work that he did, and the next day it started raining. Wow. You know that sometimes we get like that, people? We get impatient. We're not willing to wait. Come on, they told you the check's in the mail. <laughs> and every day you go to the mailbox. My check is not here. What? Donde está mi cheque? You know? They always tell you the check's in the mail, the check's in the mail, and the check doesn't get, and you're all impatient on the parrive, chasing the floors, going up and down. Man, you know what I do when I'm waiting for money? Huh? You know, I'm going to tell you what, and she knows this. You know what I do? I count it as a blessing. I say, it's in the bank. It's in the bank. The money's in the bank. So don't get impatient, people. Amen? 
It says, Therefore be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Waiting, it says, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rains. Amen. 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 He says, you also be patient. Establish your heart. See, it all starts in the heart, people. There's got to be something within your heart that you have to speak to yourself when it comes to being patient. Huh? And I don't care if you're going through this trial. Just be patient. Whatever you're praying for, God's going to bring you out of it. Amen. Amen. Are you guys still waiting for your stimulus check? <laughs> then be patient. <laughs> Amen. It says, you also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is what? Is at hand. You know that we're one day closer for the coming of the Lord than we think? Look, nobody knows when He's coming. A lot of people are saying, well, the Lord is, well, the Lord is at hand. He's coming. When He gets here, guess what? Just be patient. He's coming back. The Lord is coming back. Tell somebody, the Lord is coming back. He just didn't say when He was coming. He's just coming back. Amen? There's too many so-called prophecies that are going out there saying, well, I think the Lord is at hand. I think maybe in 99 days He's going to be here. Amen? Don't believe it, people. Amen? He says, you also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the Lord is at hand. He says, do not grumble against each other. <laughs> Have you ever gone into an argument with your husband and wife? And you're grumbling, huh? Because you're waiting on something to happen. Nothing happens, huh? And the Lord is telling us not to grumble against one another. You know how hard it is to keep your mouth shut? And the Lord says to be still, huh? Be quick to listen and what? And be what? Well, the next time you want to get angry, say, Bobby, be slow to speak. Bobby, I don't like what you just said to me right now. Be slow to speak. Amen. He says, do not grumble against one another. Brethren, lest you be what? Condemned. You think that this stuff, that very thing that you're saying to these people, whoever it is you're grumbling against, you think that it's not going to come back to you? It is, people. The Word is telling us here. Look, behold, he says, the judge is standing at the door. He says, my brother, he says, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Amen. Look at everything that, oh man, you know, every time that I read this, this book or some of the chapters, I think about Jeremiah, of the weeping prophet, man. You know that brother cried so much? Oh man, he could have filled the ocean with his tears. Seriously, this brother was crying for the nation. This, crying for, well, this brother was crying for Jerusalem. I don't, I don't understand how many tears came out of this man because he was hurting so much. Because the people couldn't get it right. I don't know how many times he spent nights in prison. He went fasting and praying for these people. They would throw him in prison because he would come and prophesy to the people. About thus says the Lord. And I used to, I, I, you look, every time I read Jeremiah, I love this. And the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. Son of man, he says, speak to my people. And you know that Jeremiah was never afraid to speak? What would you do if you heard the voice of God? Oh my God, people. What would you do if you heard the voice of God? Huh? Whether you're in your bedroom sleeping at night, or you're driving down the freeway, or you're at work, all of a sudden you hear this voice, and it's an audible voice. What would you do if God began to give you directions and instructions? Go and tell my people. And he would come, you would come into the church, thus says the Lord. And the Lord said, tell somebody, the Lord said. The Lord said. Oh my God, don't you love that? Amen. Don't you love that when you, you, hear, you read that? And the Lord said. This is God speaking to his people. We are his people. 
Amen? Amen. It's like you, Mark, is talking to your son right there and telling him something to do something. And if he doesn't want to do it, he becomes disobedient. Are you just going to let him go? No. You're going to discipline him. <laughs> Amen? And it's like that with fathers and mothers. It's like that with husbands and wives. Amen? Amen. It works in every area of our lives, people. Amen? Amen? So we need to know and understand that when we speak, well, I, oh my God, when God begins to speak to us, oh my God, people, and the Lord said, yeah. I love that. It says, and do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. He says, behold, the judge is standing at the door. It says, my brother, he says, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and what? Patience. patience. You know what, people? If we had a little bit more patience in us, huh? what would you do if God blessed you every time you needed patience? What if God rewarded you for your patience? I tell you what, everybody wouldn't have nothing to say. <laughs> You will have nothing to say. Well, the Lord said. The Lord said to be quiet, to be still. And the Lord said. When was the last time you really heard the word of God? And you obeyed it. And you walked in it. And you lived in it. Huh? Every day. Amen. What do you think the word of the Lord says when he was talking to Joshua? And Joshua saw everything that was going on. And he says, as for me and my household... We're going to serve the Lord. Think about what it takes for your entire household to serve the Lord. Amen. Who pays the rent? Who pays the light bill? Amen. You know that we're all going to be accountable for our own actions and everything that takes place under our roof. Not under this roof, but under your roof. Amen. 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 He says, my brother, he says, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. He says, indeed, he says, we count them blessed who endured. See what happens, people? See, the thing is that sometimes we don't seem to understand the blessings that God has in store for us as we continue to endure and persevere through these things. There's something that's waiting for us at the end of that trial. No, there's something that's waiting for us at the end of that trial, people. And you got to read the Word of God to see what God is saying to each and every one of us. I know what I'm waiting for, and it's coming. I don't know about you, but I'm going to claim that for myself. I know that the blessings of God are coming. Amen. I've learned how to endure. I've learned how to persevere. I've learned how to be patient. I have. I'm not saying that just to say because I'm reading this. You gotta learn how to be patient with yourself and other people. Amen? Amen? Maybe they don't have everything that you have. Maybe they don't have all the qualities and all the education that you have. Be a little patient with people once in a while. Amen? Amen. Have, you know, try a little kindness and a little tenderness with some people every so often. Amen? Amen. He says, my brother, he says, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, he says, we count them blessed who endure. Amen. You have heard the perseverance of Job. Amen. You know what this man went through. If you read the entire book of Job, oh my God, it's a good book to read, people. You know what? That book alone, the book of Job, will teach you how to persevere. The book of Job will teach you how to endure even temptations. Amen. Even he, oh my God, people. Even when friends come around, all these three friends that came around, pointing the finger at him. Oh, Job, you must have sinned. You must have sinned. Look at this trial that you're going through. I know God punished you. It's not always God, people. God only allows things to happen in our lives. Because he's trying to test us. I want to see if you're for reals. I want to see if you're going to stand up for the word. I'm going to see if your faith is real. Oh, I'm going to see if you're really putting your trust in me. Amen. And the word of God says, trust in the Lord with what? With all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. But in all ways, in all ways, he says, acknowledge. Oh my God, people. Do you really know this God? Do you know this God? 
then begin to know who he really is and the words that he's speaking to us. Amen. Look at the, the book of Psalms and Proverbs, man. Words that we can live by. Our daily lives, the book of Proverbs alone. Amen. Think about everything that you're going through right now. You don't think that God wants to bring you out of that? Huh? Maybe you're in a mess. I don't know. I don't want to be in a mess. I want to be blessed. I don't want to live a life of mess. I want to live a life of blessings. Amen. That's why he told the people, Mira, oh my God, people. Look, I'm ready to take you into the land of milk and honey. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be pure. Man, you're going to be nourished with milk. You're going to be, man, everything that you taste is going to taste like honey. Everything's going to be sweet. You're going to have a sweet life. Amen. 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 But yet these people didn't believe it. Didn't they see all the miracles, signs, and wonders that he performed in Egypt? Didn't they see the greatest miracle of all? A parting of the Red Sea? Huh? Amen. Didn't they see everything? He gave them manna to eat, the water and everything. Shade, they, they, they were in the coolness of the day. Every day they had a cloud covering over him. And it was cool. Then at night, oh my God, they were never lost at night. There was a pillar of fire guiding them through. Oh my God, people. And these people, Moses, we want some meat. Quiero carne. Quiero carne, carne asada. Bring me some carne asada, Moses. Man, I tell you what, because they were so patient, you know what? God brought them so much meat. They ate so much meat that they were throwing it up through their noses. And then they got sick afterwards. They got so sick of eating quail. Oh, my God. See, these people weren't patient. You know how many people died in the wilderness because they weren't willing to believe in God? Huh? And they were going, man, you know, these people, oh, come on, bro. Get, get this, people. These people chose to go through a trial. They made a decision to go through a trial. Amen? Walk in the ways of the Lord and see how God blesses you. No, walk in his obedience and see what God does. Put your trust in God. Put your faith in God. Amen. God's going to protect us, people, from the left to the right, from the north to the south, everywhere. Amen. Amen. But too many people, man, I don't know what it's going to take, people. Amen. Indeed, it says, we come and bless who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen... Of oh, the end intended by the Lord. Oh my God, people. You think that God doesn't have intentions on your life? Huh? You know, that's why I'm always telling you guys, look, there's a great blessing that is waiting for you. No, there's great blessings that are waiting for you. Think about who you are, what you are. Think about where you're at in life right now. What do I have to do to clean up my life? What do I have to do to walk right in the sight of God? Amen? Amen. You know that nobody can answer that. I can't even answer that for my wife. I can I can stand in the gap and pray. She can do the same thing for me. But you know what? Only God knows what lies ahead. But I tell you what, there's blessings that are ahead for us. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Indeed, he says, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard the perseverance of Job. And have seen the intent by the Lord. That the Lord is very what? Compassionate and merciful. Oh my God people. Right now all of us should be dead. But because of his mercies. And his compassion. Towards us. Why do you think that we have to be the same? Sometimes we don't want to be merciful. Sometimes we don't want to be compassionate with people. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it just hurts too much. And, you're, and, and people sometimes put you in a trial. People drag you into trials. Amen. And there you go along with them. My God, stand up for what you believe in and tell them, look. And the Lord said. Go back and tell them that. The Lord said. Amen. Do you believe in God? And the Lord said. Oh my God, people. Amen. Tell you what, I was reading all this and I said, the Lord just... Started speaking to me on a personal basis. Started thinking about everything that I've been through. We've been through. Our marriage, our life, our home, our families. 
the church, the ministry. You think that we haven't been through trials in this church, in this ministry? But we haven't given up. Who told us? I'm not going to give up. I remember somebody told me when I decided that we were going to name the name of the church Truth in Love Family Ministries. You know that you're going to have to live by that? You're going to have to learn to live by truth and in love. Well, that's easy when you love somebody. That's easy when you're walking in truth. Are you going to believe a lie? Are you going to start lying to people? Huh? And I'm going to tell you why, people. Why do you think the Lord has blessed this ministry so much? Huh? Why do you think the Lord has opened doors for this ministry? I told you before and I'll tell you again. And you guys already know this. Everything in this was given to us. I remember that night that we went and we received this big screen. We got enough money to get by that keyboard there. Somebody's going to be playing that keyboard soon. Yeah. You think that God just blessed you with something just so you can have, make it look like you got this awesome worship team? Well, guess what? We do have an awesome worship team. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about musicians. As long as we're glorifying the Lord. As long as we're praising Him and worshiping. That's all He cares. Amen. That's all God take, cares about. Amen. Amen. So I'm being patient, but they're ready. Mira. Oh, they're still hot. Amen. I tell you, man, God has been so good to this church. Amen. But so we've endured some things. Amen. Thank you, Father. He says, Indeed, we account them blessed who endured. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the intent by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brother, he says, Do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into what? Into judgment. If you're going to say you're going to do something for the church or the ministry, guess what, people? Listen to me. Follow through. Amen. You're not making a promise to me or to Pastor Marcia. You're making a promise to God that you're going to follow through. Amen. 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 Well, I hope I'm speaking truth here tonight. Amen. 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 Turn over to the book of 1 Peter. Amen. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 4. No, I'm sorry, verse 12. 1 Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, it says, Do not think it strange concerning, it says, concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Amen. He says, But rejoice, it says, but rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Amen. Think about everything. We read about it. We hear about it. We think about everything that Jesus Christ went through. Huh? From the beginning of birth, to his death, to the resurrection, and him sitting at the right hand of the Father. You think that Jesus didn't go through some stuff? Huh? You think that Jesus didn't go through a trial? Huh? I think he went through the heaviest trial for each and every one of us. You know that he became an example so we wouldn't have to go through all this? But sometimes, it like, like I said, sometimes we choose to go through trials. Amen? But this is why the Lord is saying, look, at the end of the day, this is why He's telling us, because at the end of the day, everything's going to be fine, people. And we don't know when that day's going to end. You may go for a trial in one day, three days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days. What if you have to go through a trial for what? 21 days. Huh? Or a year. It doesn't matter, people. Amen. You're going to come out of it. No, you're going to come out of it. He's telling us here, look, this is Peter speaking. He says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning, it says, concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Has anybody ever heard about somebody going to a trial? And you, and you get a phone call, you get an email, you get a text from somebody, and it'll say, oh my God, I can't believe it. Listen to me. Believe it. No, believe it. Believe it. Find out why they're going through a trial. Amen? Don't start be. you know, I tell, oh my God, people. This is what happens with Christians a lot. As soon as you hear somebody going through a trial, all of a sudden, guess what happens? 
Huh? I wonder what they did. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they fell into a sin. Or they did this or they did that. You know, as soon as you hear somebody go to a trial, you say, oh man, I can't believe it. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray for them. Yeah. What if your prayers are the ones that God answers and brings them out of that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Instead of you talking about them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because we don't know what they're going through. We don't know why they're going through a trial. We don't know why they're being tested. But as soon as you hear somebody going through a trial, pray for those people. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And even pray for the unbeliever too. Amen. Because you never know what your prayers are going to do for those people. Amen. He says, Beloved, do not think it a strange, he says, concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. He says, But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad well, with what? Exceedingly joy. So when it's all over and done with people, you're going to be so happy. Guess what? You may even get a phone call. You may be able to get a text. He said, you're not going to believe what happened. Man, God just turned this whole thing around. No, God just turned this whole thing around. You know that God can turn any issue around whenever he chooses to? Huh? You know that God can make things happen in your life? Amen. Amen. He can pull you out of these trials, people. But you know what? Don't worry about what it, when you're going through it. Man, get back, get back and in, get back into your prayer closet. Start praying and start asking the Lord. Don't ask him, why am I going through this trial? Start thanking the Lord that he's going to bring you out of the trial. Amen. Because you begin to question God, you may stay there longer. <laughs> Amen. He says, but rejoice to the extent that you be partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with what? Exceedingly joy. Amen. But if you are reproached for the name of the Christ, He says, blessed are you, for the Spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part He is blasphemed, but on your part He is glorified. But let none of you suffer as, as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or is that what? A what? That's what I've been speaking on, huh? I didn't even know that was going to come up. I've been sharing that about your walk, about being... A, why do you think the Lord put that one thing in there? Through all that. He puts in there because you know what? When people are going through trials, and people hear about it, and if you got a person that's a busybody... <laughs> Man, the whole body of Christ is going to know about it. You ain't going to believe what I just heard. Man, you ain't going to believe what I saw on Facebook. Man, you're not going to believe the text that I got. Oh my God. And there you go as a busybody talking about people. And you don't even know the first clue why they're going through a trial. And why they're suffering so much. But you're so quick. Oh my God. You're so quick to say something about somebody. When you should be praying for somebody. Amen. 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 Again it says. A busybody in other people's what matters. Stay out of people's. Just tell, tell somebody. Mind your own business. <laughs> Amen. Thank you Father. He says, now if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this what? In this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. Oh my God, people. Now if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? That's a heavy scripture, people. Amen. Let me read it again. For the time has come for judgment to begin in at the house of God. You know that we have no room or any right to judge no one. Amen. He says, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Now if he begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Amen. 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 Why don't we 
نیستن تاست باری کنسیدر و انجوری We want to thank you guys for being here tonight on a Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys receive what the Spirit of God had to say. Amen. We'll see you guys Thursday, not Thursday. Oh, Pastor Marshall will be on conference line tomorrow. She's on the red phone. She's got a red phone at the house. You know, she's waiting. She's just waiting for God to, to ring that red phone. He says, I'm coming back. Amen. Amen. I'm just kidding you guys. I just want to thank all of you for being here. Don't forget Sunday morning. Invite somebody to church. We're going to have a good time. No, we're going to have a good time. It's like this. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Father, I pray that your good hand would rest upon each and every one that is here tonight, Father. Every home, every hostel that is represented here tonight, Father. I thank you for who you are and what you are and what you're about to do with us and through us, Father. I thank you for your tender mercies. I thank you for your compassion. I thank you for your joy, Father. But I thank you for your love that you have for each and every one of us, Lord. So I thank you right now, Father God, as we all head home, Father God. I pray that you protect us on the road and off the road or wherever we may be or go, Father. To you bring us all back together in unity and one accord, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.